if you see a stock that's worth centavos, you don't just buy it directly. Because here's the thing also, if every stock that was worth pennies were, were cheap, then everyone would have bought penny stocks. But that's not true. Use earnings and use valuations to help you decipher if this is good or not. Are you a stock market newbie and you want to learn the basics of the market but above and beyond the basics you want to learn what stock should you buy what's a good stock what's a bad stock how do you differentiate a stock that's not so good not doing so well how do you also find out which stock is cheap which stock is expensive and above and beyond that how do you find the perfect timing to buy and sell stocks when should you buy when should you hold and when should you sell to either take profits or cut loss if you're new and you want to learn all of these concepts that and more will be in this video so check this video out People need to know the stock market is still made out of businesses. So if you are an investor, it's important that you need to know the business that you're buying into. You're not just buying a number. Especially investor ka. Pag investor ka at trader, totally different perspectives. Totally different, pag, yeah. Pag investor ka, you need to know that you're not just buying ticker, you're not just buying a number. You are buying a business. So how do you uh, overcome the jargon? So, ano lang, aral lang. Nothing beats taking the time to read. Nothing beats taking the time to study. Nothing beats taking the time that after you read, after you study, uh, you implement what you studied by actually putting real money on real stocks that you've studied. Your greatest investment is yourself. Eh. Yung in-invest ko sa market, at some point, mababalik ko rin naman yun. Eh. Malalagyan ko rin yung pera na yun. Eh. Pero invest ko sa sarili ko, hindi na mawawala yun. Eh. So you find what works for you. You've, I've seen so many, so many CEOs that kahit sobrang yaman na nila, sobrang galing na nila sa business nila, their, their business make multi-millions, nag mba pa rin sila. Because they know eh, their best investment is themselves. What you feed allows you to earn as much as you can. The advantage of people now is everything is in Google. They just have to search whatever they want to learn, and it, it just takes time. Eh. As as what you said, people equate it to gambling, but it becomes gambling if you don't study. It becomes gambling if you don't take the time to uh, learn. People always think because that investing in the stock market is lagay kapera, you become rich. It's not get rich quickly eh? because if it was that easy, then everyone would be a billionaire. It's something also that you take a lot of time to do. Uh, not all investors use the same parameters. Very, very important is sa akin, ha, at least gusto ko malaman how the company is making money is yung mm -hmm. company niya nag increase Gusto ko rin malaman gano'ng kadaming cash yung company. Lahat ng sinasabi ko sa'yo, makikita siya sa mga balance sheet ng company at sa income statement niya, everything is disclosed doon. So makikita mo siya lahat doon. Then gusto ko rin makita how much is its debt in reference to the number of equities that it has Gusto ko rin makita how much assets does the company have na kaya niyang bayarin lahat ng obligations niya. Kasi if times are bad, parang ngayon, madaming companies walang sales. Pero gano'ng kadaming assets yung pwede niyang gamitin para mabayaran lahat ng obligations niya. Tapos, after knowing all of these things, I want to know kung mura siya. Bukod doon also, kung sensitive ka sa dividends, gusto ko makita yung dividends niya. Gano'ng ka-consistent mm -hmm. kung yung dividends ba niya uh, nag increase just to summarize what I said, it's nice mm -hmm. kung kumikita yung company. Kasi madaming companies din naman na kumagalaw yung stock price pero hindi kumikita eh. So kung di siya kumikita, <laughs> eh, it's, not, it's not worth it. Especially if you're an investor, gusto mo mm -hmm. company kumikita. Pero bukod sa kumikita siya, you want the company also to be growing as well. You want the company na may track record of earnings. Kasi kung may track record mm -hmm. of earnings, makita mo na, ang galing ito, consistent siya. Good year, bad year, mataas yung inflation. Yung year na yun, pero yung earnings pa rin niya, kumita pa rin. That's something that's very, very good. So, gusto mo, liquid siya, kaya niya settle obligations niya. Gusto mo makita na kahit may utang siya, the debt is not as high compared to uh, the equity that it has also. Uh, please remember, pag walang utang yung company, never siya mababankrupt. Pero also, mm -hmm. kung wala siyang utang naman, hindi niya na ma-maximize yung ability niya to borrow cheap na pwede niya sanang gamitin yung company ay yung pera na yun to be able to expand further. So, may, may pros and cons siya in terms of 
pag-borrow tsaka pag hindi pag-borrow yung kailangan lang makita doon is gaano ka sulit yung pag-borrow niya gaano ka dami rin yung hiniram niya compared to the equity that they have mm-hmm. after all of that doon ko pa lang titingnan kung mura siya o hindi kasi mistake of a lot of investors they analyze it if it's cheap pero para sa akin mm-hmm. that should always be the last step for example what was the mm-hmm. last phone na binili mo iPhone 10 po. Bakit mo binili yung iPhone 10? Proven na po yung quality eh. Okay, proven yung quality. Ano pa? Mm-hmm. Meron naman iPhone 8, meron iPhone 10s, meron other variants. Mm-hmm. Well, bakit iPhone 10 yung kinuha mo? Eh, halos sabay-sabay siya lumabas. Kung sa iPhone 10 po ako, mas may enjoy ko po yung mga current apps ngayon mm-hmm. na hindi po ako nahirapan. Kasi sa previous model, medyo lag na kasi siya. Ganun. So, that's what I'm saying. Lahat ng binanggit mo sa akin, yun yung mga yun yung mga reasons mo kung bakit mo gusto bilhin yung Apple na yun. Mm-hmm. Pag nasatisfy lahat ng mga reasons na gusto mo, saka mo titignan yung presyo. Pag mahal mm-hmm. na sa inyo, bibilhin. Pero pag nasa price na siya na gusto mo, bibilhin mo siya. Ganun po okay. yung analyze ng company. And I want to talk about PE ratios and I want to talk about how can you decipher if a stock is cheap or expensive because there's there's a big thing about this. A lot of people think that if a stock is at 1 peso, it's a great buy already because they think it's relatively cheap. But here's the thing, and they would, they would shy away from stocks that are 10 pesos or 100 pesos because they think it's expensive and because they think it's high. But nothing can be further from the truth. Why, why am I saying this and why is this significant and why is this uh, pretty much important? It does not mean that the stock is at 100 pesos that it's relatively expensive already it does not mean also that the stock is one peso it means that it's cheap you must have something else to help you determine if the stock is worth buying or not you must use and counter it along with earnings the earnings must be your anchor the earnings must be your guide to determine whether the stock is cheap or expensive one ratio that comes to mind is what you call the PE ratio the PE ratio is the price per share divided by the earnings per share of the stock what's interesting about that is this uh, the price if it goes higher it means that the PE ratio using division will be relatively higher will be more expensive but on the flip side also the price uh, if it's lower the PE ratio also would give you a lower value as well so that's how you can that's how you can look at it uh, a stock that's more expensive as a PE ratio that's higher some would put a, a benchmark of 20 the further it is higher from 20 the more expensive the stock is the lower it is from 20 some people would would find a stock more attractive if it's around 10 or 12 or 15 times PE ratio uh, it becomes relatively cheaper as well going back to the formula PE ratio means earnings per share if the earnings per share is high the PE ratio would relatively be lower as well. So what does that mean? As long as a stock can consistently produce amazing earnings, even if the stock price is higher, the stock will remain to be cheap as well. So if a stock has a suddenly has a 10 to 20% move, but its earnings per share also goes up, it maintains its earnings per share, it maintains its PE ratio that it doesn't become as expensive as what it is. So, so again, this video is here to help you decipher using PE ratio if the stock is cheap or expensive. The higher the PE ratio is the more expensive it is some some more practical applications about this is if you try to understand and analyze PE ratios uh, you could also compare PE ratios within the same industry of sorts what does that mean uh, it, it means that if you're analyzing say a bank BPI you can analyze BPI as as to where it is and where it stands towards other banks in the industry you can look at its average compared to other banks in the industry you can look at uh, peers for example if the PE ratio of BPI say is 13 and the bank is say, the banking industry say 40 times PE what does that mean uh, BPI is relatively cheaper than the entire industry as a whole so it becomes a buying opportunity for you because you can see that it's relatively cheap another comparison if for example security bank has a PE ratio of say just for example purposes uh, 12 and then another East West Bank say has a PE ratio of 10 so East West Bank becomes a better buying opportunity than security bank this is if you're especially comparing two companies two stocks to each other it gives you a notion of what's uh, worth worth buying if you find stocks that are good already uh, one thing about the uh, PE ratio is this uh, just a disclaimer it does not tell you if the company is uh, good it tells you though if the company is cheap so you must use other fundamental parameters when you start to analyze the stock when we do stock smarts fundamental analysis our goal there is to help you decipher it not just a stock that's cheap but a stock that's good growing and valuable over the short mid and long term as well so that's the goal that's the heart of it 
that uh, you get to decipher that when you find a stock at one peso, you don't just look at the price, but you look at uh, its its earnings over a stretch period of time, and that's how you make money uh, in the market over the long term. So this will now help you if you see a stock that's worth centavos, you don't just buy it directly. Because here's the thing, also, if every stock that was worth pennies were were cheap, then everyone would have bought penny stocks. But that's not true. Use earnings and use valuations to help you decipher if this is good or not. Can you buy here? Yes. If you bought here, this is your target price, agree? Yes. If it breaks out from here, what, what do you do? Right. You hold? You can hold that. Oh, sa akin, ah, it's okay to buy again, pero why buy there? Eh, kung may mabibili pa kayo isang stock na nasa support. Ako, I always like buying at the support. Why? If you buy a stock at the support, it has a potential to break out. If you buy a stock that's breaking out, you buy higher already. Okay lang din naman. But ako na sana yung I buy at the support if it breaks out, extra pa. If it doesn't break out, do you still make money? Yes, yes because you can sell at the resistance. Now, next. After breaking here, what do you do? Your target price nyo, you adjust here. If it does not break out from this, what do you do? Sell. But if it breaks out, you adjust. If it, if it does not break out from this, you sell. If it breaks out from this, adjust here. And so on and so forth. You adjust it as long as there's resistances. So every target price that you will see is just based on resistances. You should always sell on where the resistance is. If you have 4,000 pesos, you have 8,000 pesos. 4,000 pesos won't make you rich. 8,000 pesos won't make you rich. Paying percentages of 8,000. For example, you pay you pay 5% of 8,000 and then you pay higher amount for 4,000 pesos. It won't really make you rich. Eh. Pero yung experience na makukuha mo from, from starting out, I think that's more important. Eh. Yung gains na pwede mo makuha from starting from a smaller amount, that's very, very important also. So, you start with whatever amount you can, no matter if it's 500 pesos, even if the fees are higher for 500. Because hindi ka naman talaga sa 500 pesos. Eh. 500 pesos, 1,000 pesos won't, uh, won't make you rich. But the learnings that you get from there, the experience that you get from there, suddenly may 100,000 ka na, pero alam mo kung ano yung pwede mong gawin sa 100,000. Yung 100,000 na yun will make you more money because you gain the experience from the 500 pesos to start. There's a big... Uh, misconception sa stocks or sa money or sa investing that it's money making money. It's not really that way pero it's it's true that it's something that's invested pero it's the skill behind that investing that will make you money. The most expensive investment is something that you lose sleep over. The most expensive investment is you lose your peace of mind. Kahit 500 pesos yun pero you lose your peace of mind then it's not worth it. Kahit 10 million pesos yun pero nakakatulog ka lang mahimbig the okay yung investment na yun. I hope you guys got a lot from this video. I hope you got the necessary insights for you to be able to learn to trade the markets with confidence because please remember this, at the end of the day, investing and trading the markets is all about competence. Competence comes from you studying, building that skill, and then competence will give you confidence to trade the markets with confidence. So if you want to know more about the markets, Please subscribe and smash that bell so you get updated every time I come up with new content about investing. We have so much videos here, all aligned to help you pick, select, and time the markets with confidence. For those of you who like to learn from reading, I have books down below in the description to help you, to guide you. The same books teaching about fundamentals, technicals, and the basics of the market. They're from Shopee and it can be delivered to wherever you are in the country as long as Shopee has coverage in that area. And also, for those who want to learn online, two courses. Number one, with Chinkitan, Tagalog course on the stock market. It's called Stock Market for everyone. It's a very basic course if you want to learn the basics on how you can invest in the stock market. And the second one is Make Money, Grow Money. It's all about business. It's all about entrepreneurship. And it's all about investing and investing in the stock market in particular. It's collaborated between me and Sean C. The link is in the description below if you want to learn more about it. And 
I have so much other links now below. I, a lot of people are asking for my gear, my vlogging gear. A lot of people are asking for other items that I use. Uh, McAfee, NordVPN, and everything else is in the description below. And if you want to support this channel, we have a Patreon account. It's also in the description below. And I guess that's it. I hope that you guys got a lot from this video. I hope this is something that added uh, value to you. I hope this is something that gave you insight because at the end of the day, you have to keep on sharpening this. You have to keep on learning so that as you start to learn, you build the conviction to be able to trade the markets with confidence. So that's it for now. This is Marvin Germo. I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon, guys, and God bless you all.